We got a new toy! I mean tool. It's a tool, not a toy. But it's also a toy. Welcome to Warp Legacy! So, most of the time when I buy something, I look it up online. I find lots of reviews and lots of reviews and lots of reviews and buy something that is at a really good price and has lots of amazing reviews. Well, I didn't do that this time. This thing had zero reviews. I typed in this number. I could barely find anything on this machine. But, this machine does what I need it to do, supposedly, and it was within a price range that we could afford. So, before this, the only welder I have is the little Harbor Freight 90 amp welder that I got given to me, and I have been very thankful that I had a welder at all, and that thing has done more than it probably should have. But, now, I have a truck that is stuck 140 miles away, and I'm planning on making a tow bar. I'm not gonna trust the welds from a little 90 amp welder to tow the truck home. This welder is, other side, this welder works on 115 or 230. Looks like it has a little adapter thing here that plugs into this. So you just plug this into this and then this into 110. Which is what I have to do right now because I don't have a 240 plug or 230 or whatever it is. 220, 40, 30, yeah. It's somewhere in there. On 220, this thing will run a 200 amps, and on 110, it's supposed to run 160. I think for what I'm doing, 160 is enough. So I should be able to do what I need to do before I get my 220 plugged in. So, let's get this thing open and see what's in the box. It's got staples in it. Always cut away from yourself. I don't know, can you still see me? I can't see the screen, so I don't know what's in view. So what do we got here? Owner's manual, the 220 to 110 converter. 10 foot ground cable. Let's back this up, so you can see a little bit more. Ooh, there we go. So, that has got a nice solid spring to it. It doesn't feel cheap, which I like. The electrode holder. That feels cheaper. I mean, it'll work. It, it's like got some weird clicking into it. Let's... Snap shut nice and tight, so it'll work. The welder itself. All right, let's get all the little stuff out of the way here. Have a look at this thing. Bring it down so you can see it. So. I gotta get my shop wired up with one of these. Until then, I gotta do this. It's not ideal, but it should work. This thing's not that heavy. It's like... When you sit it down, there's like stuff that kind of digs. I take this thing off? Yes. I don't want this thing on here. It's gonna get in the way. Okay. So, there's like no rubber grippers or anything on the bottom, and it sounds like some of these screw heads are actually sticking out farther and like scraping on my desk. So, not the greatest, but shouldn't really matter in the shop. What does this tag say? Note, automatic temperature control fan, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it just says the fan doesn't come on until it gets up to temperature. So that's kind of cool. It's got a power switch in the back, which I have recently learned. The fact that the power switch is in the back means uh, this is also sold in, I think it's the UK, because they have a regulation that the power switch has to be within a certain distance of the cord. Metal sides of the box, the front and back, are plastic. And it looks like this back is also used for a different one. Because there's an empty hole here. I'm guessing a different model has uh, maybe a gas input. That's probably what it is. But this one is just DC stick welding. One thing I want to know is if I plug it in, if this knob, when it's on 110, if it, the, this just goes up to 160 here, or if it 
says it will do more. There you go, it says 19. Okay, so it still <clears throat> shows 200 uh, when you have it plugged into 110, even though all of the documentation says that it only does... There we go. Even though all the documentation says it only does 160 amps on 110, this still shows 200 amps. So, when it's on 110, I don't know if 160 here is 160 or if turning it up to 200 makes it output 160. I don't have a way to test that so I won't know. Let's plug these in and see how they plug in. Alright so this thing can be set up as electro positive or electro negative by switching which one you plug into what. They go on nice and smooth. I like that. Feel like it'll hold up pretty decent. It's definitely not the best I felt, but it's absolutely not the worst I felt either. Now, one of the things I like most about this machine is actually its duty cycle. Because when this machine is maxed out, its duty cycle is 60%, which from what I've been looking at, is fairly unusual for a machine that's this cheap. So at 200 amps, you're supposed to run the thing for six minutes and then wait four minutes. At 156 amps, I think it is. At 154. At 154 amps, 100%. This thing doesn't have a duty cycle below 154 amps. I like that a lot. A lot of these little cheap in inverter welders will not run 6010 because they don't have uh, output voltage high enough. According to the paper, this <clears throat> the uh, open, open circuit voltage for this thing, 85 volts. It is supposed to be able to run 6010. But as with all of the rest of the numbers that I've been stating, I, I don't know how accurate this this paper is because we'll just we'll, just, we'll we'll just read this back here. If the welding machine just shut down, cannot immediately repair its internal. Should be in the distribution box switch and power off at least 5 minutes after the implementation of welding machine to allow the full discharge of the capacitor. Yup, that's English. The sticker's coming off, new out of the box, and the sticker, the sticker even isn't even stuck on all the way. Neither one of them are. All right, it's got some great quality control, but I don't care about the stickers. I care about how the thing welds. And as soon as I get some rods, I will test it. I don't have any rods. No wait, I do have some. I will be right back. All right, I got this rod that was in my grandpa's stuff. All right, what do we have? In this metal container, we have Fleet Weld 180, 530 seconds, R921, E6011. So I have some very old 530 second 6011 that I'll probably play with. And E7016. I don't know what that is. But these are 3 16 70 16 rods. Might have a hard time running this. These rods look nice though. So that was the unboxing of the Amico Power SF200A. I've got some rod. Let's take this let's take this thing outside and actually see if we can do something. Even though I don't even know if on 110 it has enough oomph to do the 530 seconds rod. Now, when you are welding. You want to make sure you have the proper safety equipment. Sleeves. You should be wearing real shoes. These are absolutely necessary. Treat yours better than I treat mine. Remember, I'm an idiot who doesn't know what he's doing. And pretty much learned everything he knows from the internet. And you know how reliable the internet is. Welding gloves. One thing I learned the hard way about these helmets, a lot of these helmets run off the light that comes from the welding arc. And when you don't use your helmet for a while, the battery goes dead. So then when you start your arc, your shade doesn't go dark soon enough. So you flash yourself. It's not fun. Not at all. 
So, what I do now, every time I haven't used this thing for a while, I find a bright light and I look into it until this thing goes dark. If there's no lights bright enough in your shop, go out and look at the sun with it. Don't actually have to look at the sun, just point the, just point the thing in the right direction until the thing goes dark. That way you won't flash yourself. Now, I have no idea if this is true or not, but I have heard from a couple places that these little inverter welders, if they live through the first little while of use, they tend to last for a while. So they go bad when they're young, but if they make it through that, they last for quite a while. I don't know if that's true or not, but because of that, we are going to run this thing through its paces. We have a fairly large electrode here, so I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to crank it all the way up and make some sparks. And hopefully I don't blow a fuse. I'm only running on 120. This thing says 200. I have no idea what's going to happen. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Do I have contact? Okay, let's crank it down. So it says 160. Let's see what happens. I got a cleaner piece of metal. We'll see if we can even get her to spark. Looks like I don't have enough oomph. Like I said, let's see if we blow a fuse. I don't think that's half bad for welding too cold with a rod that's who knows how many years old with flux that's like growing stuff and deteriorating. So I think this welder will do an okay job, but I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to abuse it. I am in the process of getting a 220 plug in here so I can use this thing to its full potential and not worry about blowing a breaker. I like this little thing. It's compact. And according to the specs, it's powerful enough to do everything I want. We'll see if that holds up true. And I'm going to do a full review video of this thing after I abuse it. Look forward to that coming pretty soon. Thank you for visiting Warp Legacy. Until next time, I'm Tuan. Go to find your legacy. I had to take the glove off to snap. So the whole infinity gauntlet thing is doesn't work that way. You can't snap with these things on. This is just a leather glove. You can't even snap with a leather glove. Leather is just dried skin. You can't snap with a leather glove. You can't snap with a metal gauntlet. Bye.